Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready to receive today's daily bread? <laughs> God. Are you ready? All right, let's 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 pray. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now, meeting every need that shows up today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. That's it. And guess what? A miracle is coming your way today. I tell you this, I know it because it's truth. Praise God. Father, thank you as we minister your truth this day. Every burden is being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, a renewal is taking place in our minds. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Now, turn your Bibles with me. I was showing you something from the book of Colossians yesterday. Let's go there quickly, quickly. Book of Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 16, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, this is how to live before the Lord as a living sacrifice holy unto him. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And I was telling you yesterday, hey, how, how does this work? It is what has the Holy Spirit told you concerning every area of your life your ministry what has the lord told you about your ministry your children what has the lord told you about your children your marriage your place of work you know some of you don't know that you're supposed to receive god's word concerning where you work you may not be the boss. you don't have to be the boss you may even be a cleaner you may be the lowest grade of staff in that place hey but you can exercise so much authority from your room at your workplace say how do i do that i'll tell you you go before the Lord and say, Lord, what, what, what do you have to say concerning my job? See, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In all wisdom. Every wisdom you are applying in this life should be your own wisdom. You are applying should be from the place of the word of Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit is the one teaching us. See, now this teaching is not my son, get up, go here. No, the Holy Spirit visits us. He teaches us things. He teaches us about finances. He teaches us about divine health. He teaches us about how to relate with people. He teaches us all those things he's teaching us. And let me tell you one secret. John chapter 15 and verse 3. Now let's go there. Now I'll read it from, to you from the Amplified Version. You need to see it from the Amplified Version. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabu Sebreke Nihi John chapter 15 and verse 3. He says, you, the Amplified, I'm reading the Amplified now, it says, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given to you. Now in brackets, it says, the teachings I have discussed with you. He says, you are cleansed, you are pruned. Why? Because of the teachings I have discussed with you. I love the way he puts it. Teachings I have discussed. This doesn't look like a command, commanding, commanding word. This is an explanatory session with him. You know, he, he, you lie on your bed and you say, Lord, talk to me about finances. I do that a lot. Lord, Talk to me about tomorrow. Talk to me about next month. What's your plan? What are you thinking? And then he comes and he begins to tell you stuff. He begins to tell you things to come. Jesus actually said he will show you things to come. Things to come. You know, things to come doesn't necessarily mean, Lord, show me. Is there going to be a plane crash? Or is there going to be, or is somebody going to die? Why are you concerned? Why are you bothered about it? You know, it's so amazing when, <laughs> you know, it's funny when, Someone popular dies, right? You find people who want to say, God showed me. I knew it was going to happen. Why did God show you? 
I've never thought about that. If you want to follow, if you want to follow by what God told Ezekiel, hey, okay, God, should, did you tell the person? No, I didn't tell the person. I just, I just knew, I just believed God. Then you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Why? Because God said, if the person dies and you don't want the person, you see, because God will not say, I told you these things. God will not say somebody is going to die if not because of sin. It's usually because of sin. Because death is not a vehicle that God uses. So when God tells you, hey, you know, we, 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 we hear differently. I'm telling you the truth. It, it, the, the way I hear God, or the way I understand, God can say the same thing to you and I, but the way I understand it may be different from the way you understand him. Now, based on where we live, based on the knowledge of God that we have, there are certain things I know God can never say. So, now, of course, you know, God doesn't speak English. So, it's not like, my, my son, I have come to tell you this. That's not what God said. That's what you understood from what God said. So, someone can say, God came to me and told me that he's going to take his servant home. Is that what God really said? Yes. So, how is he going to take his servant home? And your interpretation now becomes, he's going to die. Is that what God said? Did God say he's going to die? God said he's going to take his servant home. But your interpretation, because the God of this world, the spirit of death, have made you believe that the only way his servant is going to be taken home is through death. So in your interpretation of what God says to you, is like, hey, you're going to die. This person is going to die. But that's not what God said. God simply said, I'll take him home. He could take him home like Elijah. Even the person, God says, hey, your work is done. I'll soon call you home. That's a great invitation. I'm telling you, that's a great invitation. But you see, the ruler of the darkness of this world, after that word comes, he comes immediately and he begins to tempt you with his lies. He says, wow, God said my work is done, so he's going to take me home. And everybody around you says, ooh, so you're going to die, you're going to die, come on now, come on. Why don't you start asking, okay, Lord, no problem. When are you sending the chariots to come and take me? Not chariots that will take you through death. Chariots that will take you like Elijah. Chariots that will... I believe strongly the same chariots that took Elijah were the same chariots that came for Moses. Moses didn't die. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You see, I read somewhere to you in, in John chapter 15 and verse 3. He says, the teachings I discuss with you is what cleanses you. John said, the blood of Jesus Christ is what cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now, as I receive words from the Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit, of course, as I receive words from him and I meditate on them and I accept them as truth, replacing what I have ever heard or known. See, it's replacing it. Now what's going on? A renewal is taking place in my mind. My life is being changed and transformed. As, I, as that transformation is taking place, I am gaining ascendancy in life over the spirits that controls darkness in this world. So they don't have power over me. Why? Because I operate on a wisdom that is beyond their sphere. I operate on a wisdom that comes from heaven, from the Lord. So when I speak that wisdom, they cannot gainsay, they cannot resist it. This is how we live. Everything about your life must have the word of God in you consigning it. Everything. And when I say the word of God, I'm not just saying quoting scriptures. Now the Holy Spirit can be teaching you things and you'll find it in scriptures. But hey, guess what? The power of those words are in his voice. 
That's why Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He didn't say the word that you read. He said the word that I speak unto you. That's why God said it in Deuteronomy. He says, man shall live by every word that proceeds. Proceeds. Present continuous tense. Not proceeded. This one we read was, pro, pro, sorry, this one we read proceeded, praise God. But now he says, man shall live by fresh words, fresh words that proceed from the mouth of God. That's why I say to God's children, if you don't hear the voice of God, how do you claim you are living? You see where the power is and you see why people fall they fall because they quote scriptures they don't hear the voice of God some heard the voice of God 10 years ago some five years ago some two years ago hey but what is the Lord saying today do you hear him today he says man shall live by every word now he tells us here let the word of Christ dwell in you richly so how am I gonna live in my finances by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God how am I gonna live in divine health by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. How am I going to live and have a happy family? By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Everything. How am I going to run a successful business? By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I go before, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I go, you, you don't understand why we even give offerings. When you give offering to the Lord, how do you know he receives it? When you give tithe to the Lord, how do you know he receives it? I told you, the way you know that you're giving your tithe right in the right place is when the Lord tells you where to give it. It's his money in the first place, see? It's his money. So you go before him, you don't assume, oh, this is money, so I'll give it to the house of God. No, you go to the owner. The owner is not a deaf and dumb you know, person. He is alive today. He speaks and he hears. He is in fellowship with us. His money is in your hands. You take it to him and say, Lord, I've got your money in my hands. Can you tell me what to do with it or where to give it or where, to, you, where you want it deployed? He will speak to you concerning it. And when you do, he, you know he has received it. And let me tell you this. When, you re, when he receives it from you, the first sign that God has received your offering is that there's going to be an increase of wisdom in your life concerning money, concerning your business. Where that tithe came from, there's going to be an increased wisdom in your life. Because that's what God gives to you. God gives to the one that is good in his sight, wisdom, knowledge, and joy. So now, you've just given him an offering. You've just paid your tithe. And while you're fellowship, that's why tithing is not a religious thing. It's not. It's not. It's a relationship thing. So you give it, he receives it, something happens. If he's happy with you, ah, shalabayakaya. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. You remember Solomon gave a thousand bonds offering. After he gave it out, what happened? God visited him. And what did God leave with him? Words. 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 So when God is pleased with you, he gives you words. What will those words do for you? They will increase your wisdom. They will increase your knowledge. They will increase your joy. That's how you know God is pleased with you. Now, guess what? That wisdom, knowledge, and joy is what is going to produce, is what's going to attract every physical thing that you need. So you, 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 you want to know how your business, or you want to know that your business is about to move up to another level? Check out the wisdom, knowledge, and joy that's coming from the Lord. Now, what's that? The word of Christ dwelling in you richly. Praise God. That's it. The word of Christ dwelling in you richly. So you look out always for his word. Every day. Lord, oh wow. You know, I was talking to you about praying for your job. You pray for your job. Say, Father, I'm going to work today. What do you have? What would you have me say? You, do you know the Lord can give you a word to give your boss? Yeah. The Lord can tell you to tell your boss, hey, I'm about to lift this company to a great dimension. That they are going to operate five times more than where they are right now. Say, whoa, Lord. Really? You want me to say that to my boss? Yeah, go tell him. Say, sorry, sir. Can I see you for a moment? Say, what is it? So I was praying this morning and God spoke to me and he said, a lifting is coming to this organization that will make you operate five times higher than where you are right now. Really? God told you that. Say, yeah. Sir, 
I know time and chance is going to happen. Expect a miracle. And soon enough, it comes. Hey, don't you think? Now, all you did was speak wisdom. Praise God. And, 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 and our time is up. Praise God. Our time is up. Uh, and today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, everything I've been saying to you all week, go listen to them again and again and let them fill your hearts and begin to see results. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.